Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Here are some advanced drag and drop techniques that you should be using on your Mac. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So most Mac users use drag and drop all the time. But there are a ton of different places where you can use it and not everybody knows about these. First let's start off with something really simple like dragging and dropping to the dock. A lot of times when you want to open a file you would select the file and double click it and it will open in the default app. But you could also drag a file down to the dock and drag it on top of an app. The apps that accept that type of file will highlight. So instead of having it open in the default text edit app I could have it open in Pages instead. But another thing you could do is you could use App Switcher with drag and drop. So I could start dragging this file and then I'll use Command Tab and continue to hold the Command key down to bring up the App Switcher. But I could also take this file and drop it onto an app here and it will open up in that app. It's really handy for opening a file in an app that you already have running. Now if you use Mission Control I'm going to use Command Up Arrow to go into it and you have multiple desktops. You can drag and drop between the desktops in a couple of different ways. So let's go to desktop number 2 here. I'm going to open up a new Finder window. And then I'm going to use Control Left Arrow to go back here. And let's say I want to move this file. I can get it to the other desktop by using Control Right Arrow to go over there all while still dragging and dropping. And I could place it in this Finder window or inside an app or something like that instead. This also works with gestures. I'm dragging with this file but I can still use four fingers on my trackpad to go to the other desktop. And you can always use Mission Control as well. So I'm going to drag like this and either use the gesture or simply Control and Up Arrow to go to Mission Control. Drag to the other desktop. Wait. And now I can drop the file into a folder here or into an app. I often hear from people using iMovie and using Import to bring files into iMovie before putting them in the timeline. But you can actually drag and drop things like videos, audio, and images right into the iMovie timeline. So you can take a video like this from the Finder and drop it right in. And it works the same way in Final Cut as well. Now you can drag and drop from the Photos app to a variety of different places. One is you can simply drag to the Finder. You can drag to the desktop or to a window like this and it will create a file there. Basically does an export just with a drag and drop. But you could also drag and drop to other apps. So for instance I could have Mail open here and be composing a new message. I can switch over to Photos, start dragging, and I'm going to do a quick Command Tab to switch to Mail and drop right into the Mail app. So to attach an image in Mail or even in Messages you don't need to export it from Photos first. You can go right from Photos to the app. Now many websites include drop zones to be able to drag and drop images right to the website. So you could certainly click a button and then select the file. But drag and drop right from the Finder usually works. So I could take an image like this one and drag it right in here. This also works with other file types on some websites. If the website supports it you will be able to drag and drop things like PDFs for instance to upload documents. And you can also often do this right from the Photos app. You can drag an image right into a website if that website is programmed to receive it. Sometimes you see a more old fashioned Choose File button like this. And if you click it it will allow you to select a file. But you could also drag and drop files or drag and drop images right from Photos right onto the button and then you'll see the photo name appear to the right of it. It's really handy rather than having to go through this whole interface. Now when working with text documents like here in Pages if you want to move something around we're often tempted to select it, to cut it or copy it and then paste it somewhere else. But you can actually drag and drop text in most text applications. So I could take this selection here after I'm done selecting it I can click and hold until I'm dragging. And I could drag this to another location like that. And this also works if I want to go to a different document. So I'll open up a second document here in Pages and I can drag and drop this text from the first document to the second document. Or I could start dragging and I'm going to switch over to Mail with the App Switcher and then I can drop text right into a Mail message I'm composing. You could also create something called text clippings. If you drag and drop some text from an app like Pages into the Finder, I'm just going to use the desktop here, you get this thing called a text clipping. If you double click on it it doesn't open in an app. You're just in the Finder here and it's giving you a view of what's in here. But you can select text and copy out of it. 
You can get information about the clipping here at the bottom. And if you wanted to you could drag that text clipping into another document like that. And when you go to Save a Document in Pages you've got the Save dialog here. And you can navigate around in it to go to the place where you want to save the file. But you could also drag and drop. If I were to take a folder like this one and drag and drop it into the Save dialog anywhere in it you could see how it jumps to that location. So if you can see the location that you want to save a file to in the Finder you can just drag and drop instead of navigating to it. This also works with open dialogs like this one. But you can just drag and drop the file right there and then it goes to that location and has that file selected. And all you need to do now is press Return or click the Open button. Now if you have a folder that you're commonly dropping files into you don't have to have a Finder window open showing that location to use drag and drop. You can simply drag and drop that folder into the sidebar there under Favorites. And now anytime you want to put something in there you can just drag and drop to the sidebar. And it's the same as dropping it into the folder itself. It's really handy when you can't see the folder because you're somewhere else entirely. If you use the terminal and you want to type a long path instead of typing it you can just use drag and drop. So I'm going to use CD for Change Directory. And let's say I want to go into this folder here. I can just drag and drop anywhere into the window and wherever the text cursor was it's going to put the full path to that location. It's even going to use backslash to escape spaces. And now I can quickly jump to that location without ever having to type it. You can also use drag and drop to save locations on the web. Here I am in Safari. And I could take this URL and drag and drop it to the Finder. To either a folder or right here to the desktop. Now if I just drag and drop this I'm actually taking the tab and moving it. So what I want to do is select the URL so I can see it highlighted. And then drag just the URL and you can see the text here. Drag that into the Finder. And then I get a web location file like this. And it works as a bookmark. So I can now double click it and you can tell it opens up that location in the browser. But you could also drag and drop URLs other places. For instance I can go into Reminders here and I can create a new reminder by dragging and dropping the URL into the Reminders app. And you can see how I created one like that. You can drag and drop into Calendar. You can drag and drop into Notes. You can drag and drop into Documents like Pages and Numbers etc. Now here's something that's important to understand about drag and drop. If you drag and drop from a location on a drive to another location on the same drive it moves the file. However if you drag and drop from one drive to another like this is on my internal drive and this folder is on my external drive then when I drag it over there you see the little green plus button. That tells me it's going to copy the file. It won't move the file from one drive to another because that means deleting the file on the original drive. So for safety it's actually going to copy it so you end up with one in both places. If you want to change this behavior simply hold down the Command key and see how the Plus button goes away. Now it's actually going to move the file so it will no longer be on the internal drive and only on the external drive. Likewise when you're moving a file on one drive if I put it somewhere it's going to move it. But if I hold the Option key down that will change to a copy. Another drag and drop technique to master is spring loading. So this is when you have a folder inside a folder. Let's say in here in Project Beta I've got another folder called Notes and such. If I want to drag and drop something into there but I can't see that subfolder right there what I can do is start dragging, go to this folder, wait and it will open up. That's called spring loading. And then I could drop it in here. And that way I can get to folders inside of folders while I'm dragging. If for some reason that's not working for you go into System Preferences and then Accessibility and then go to Pointer Control and then look for Spring Loading Delay. Make sure you have Spring Loading checked here. And here's one last technique and this is brand new in Mac OS version 12.3 and that's drag and drop over multiple machines using Universal Control. So here I am with a Mac, an iPad, and another Mac using Universal Control and you can see I can drag and drop files between all three devices. So dragging and dropping from one Mac to another becomes a lot easier when you use Universal Control to connect them. So I hope you've learned some new techniques here. Thanks for watching. If you like this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.